Several of my gold shell mini box miners have tried to burn down my house. A few months ago, my wife woke me up at 3 a.m. complaining that it smelled like an electrical fire. Do you wanna die? I went down to my little crypto mining farm in my basement, and sure enough, the smell was coming from my farm. I unplugged the whole farm and went back to bed. The next morning, I investigated further and found the culprit. It was one of the six pin PCI connectors failing on one of my gold shell mini doge miners due to the cheap power supplies that come with these devices. I have two small children at home, and no amount of crypto is worth risking their lives. So given that these miners are currently unplugged due to being unprofitable, I thought it'd be a perfect time to fix these bad connectors. I've seen other people complaining about this issue online, but couldn't find anything on YouTube addressing how to fix them. So I thought it'd be nice to walk you through how you can fix the connectors yourself in this video. But forewarning, I'm no electrician. If you don't feel comfortable doing this yourself, you can always take it to your local computer repair shop. That's the first thing I tried, but the first shop I visited told me they refused to service cryptocurrency miners. And the second shop told me they wanted $150 in labor per miner plus the cost of parts. 150, Jesus. I had three miners to fix and they refused to negotiate on price. So I said, no thanks, I'll just do it myself. So the miner we'll be repairing today is the Gold Shell Mini Doge. This is the original Gold Shell Mini Doge. As you can see here on the back, the PCI connectors here are burnt out. So we're gonna be replacing that. Next, the supplies you'll need. Uh, first, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. I have this iFixit computer repair kit, uh, which comes in handy when, whenever I'm repairing computer equipment, such as cryptocurrency miners, but you by no means need this uh, to do this install. You just need a standard Phillips head screwdriver. I also pull out here three of the different tweezers that come with the kit. I don't end up using this in this install, so you don't need those for this install. Uh, next, we'll need a needle nose pliers. And then you'll need the new PCE connector. Uh, I ordered these off eBay. I'll put a link to where I ordered them uh, in the description below. And then finally, we'll need a soldering kit. I purchased this soldering kit off Amazon. I'll also link this below. I got this for 80 bucks and it worked uh, great for this purpose. And then we have the plunger for soldering. And then we also have the solder that we'll also use to reconnect the PCE connector. So the next step will be to take apart the mini doge. I'm fast forwarding through this because it's pretty basic in terms of taking apart. There's six screws on the back and then four screws on the front. Um, so it's fairly straightforward to take apart these devices. Uh, one thing to note when you are taking this apart is it does void the manufacturer's warranty. So keep that in mind if you are taking this apart. So you can see here I'm unclipping the front fans and then pulling out the motherboard. You can see here, here's the bad PCE connector again. And the last part we'll have to take out is the internet board for ethernet and Wi-Fi. So next I'm taking the pliers and I'm pulling out the bad PCE connector. So it takes a little jigging, but it's pretty easy to come off. So you can see that is quite damaged. So next I'm gonna take each of the six pins, I'm gonna take the needle nose pliers and tilt them perpendicular to the board so they'll be easy to pull out. I'm doing that for each of the six pins here. So they should all be perpendicular to the board. Then I'll flip the board over. And I'll turn on the soldering kit. Uh, for the soldering kit, I am using the max temperature, which is just under 900 degrees for both the soldering iron and the blower. So the soldering iron tip I'm using for this piece is the needle nose tip. So that's the finest point tip that they have. And then I'm also applying the blower to the board to loosen up the solder. So then I can uh, get those six pins out of the board. I'm doing this on the opposite side of where the pins are and I'm heating up the top of the, where the pins are. And then I'm taking the needle nose pliers and pulling out the pin from the bottom. I'm also taking the soldering plunger and trying to plunge any solder that's melted off of the board. So it does take a little time here, but I found that this soldering kit uh, worked well for this purposes. I did see other people complaining online that some soldering kits don't actually get hot enough to take off uh, the solder that's on here, but I did find this soldering kit worked well for this purpose. But obviously I've got to use the blower here. It, it does take some muscle and some uh, wiggling to get them all out. And I apologize, we can't see a great view here. This is my first time trying to film overhead and we didn't get the best angle here of me uh, desoldering uh, these six pins here. 
We got the fifth one out, and it looks like we're on the last one here. All right, so we've got all six pins out of the board. You can see there's six little holes there uh, where the pins used to be. And I'll flip it over to the other side. You can see the same six pins there. So next what I'm going to do is take the soldering iron again, again with the fine needle nose point, and take the iron and try to loosen those holes so the holes are big enough so that I can insert the new six pin into uh, the board. If you don't have enough room in there, there's extra solder still in the, in the board, it's gonna be very difficult to get those pins in the, in the board and you may end up uh, bending those pins. So here I'm trying to manually put the pins into the board and what I'll do here is I'll lightly tap it with the hammer so I can make sure that the pins go all through, all the way through the board and there's a small amount of pin that is showing on the top side of the board. So on the side of the board opposite of the PCB connector. So there we go. So next step is to solder the six pins into the board. So we're gonna solder from the opposite side of the PC connector. Now one thing to note while doing this, you'll wanna be in a well ventilated area. Uh, the first time I did this, I did this off camera, just testing this process to make sure it worked out well. And I didn't open the window in my room and the smoke detectors went off in my house. And my wife was not happy because my children were both taking naps and it woke them up. So make sure you've got a well ventilated area for this because there is some smoke that comes from uh, soldering this. Now I don't have the steadiest hands and sorry I don't once again I have the best angle here of me soldering. Uh, I am in no means a professional when it comes to soldering. Uh, this is actually my first time I've ever soldered anything so it's, uh, it's probably not the prettiest job but it, it worked well for me here. So really what I'm trying to do here is just get some solder on each of the six pins so that it can stay attached to the board so it doesn't come loose and we have a potential uh, issues in the future. You can also see there's some smoke coming from the board when you're melting the solder. So it may also be good to wear a mask or something just so you don't inhale any of the fumes from the soldering. All right, so we're just finishing up here. It looks like I've got all six pins here attached and you can see the PC connector is firmly against the other side of the board. And did a little jiggle here to make sure that it's firmly in and connected. So now we'll put together the mini doge again. Uh, once again, I'm gonna fast forward through this because this is pretty basic in terms of putting this back together. Let's put it back together in the reverse order that you took it apart and make sure you're putting all the, the screws back in and attaching everything. So now that it's connected, the last thing we want to do is test uh, the new PC connector to make sure it's working correctly. I like using these EVGA 1300 Gold Plus uh, power supplies. Uh, you can power between four and five gold shell miners with them. I found them to be much more reliable and safe and uh, a better use for a power supply than the, the big brick power supplies that gold shell provides. I think those brick ones are really what's driving these uh, fire issues. So I'll link that power supply in the description below if you're interested in picking up one of those as well. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. If I can just prevent one person from burning down their house, I'll call this video a win. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll link all the tools that we use in the description below. While you're down there, if you hit that like button for me, I'd really would appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Thanks and goodbye.